Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Hello and welcome to Getting to Know You. I'm your host, Robert Jakeway. On today's show, we're going to be talking to three new authors. Peter Platt, who is a former business owner and is the chairman of the Colony Town Planning Board, his wife, Jean, and assistant director to the library, Richard Naylor. And they're going to be talking about their book, Wolf Road, A Century of Development. Let's go meet them. Peter, Jean, and Richard, thank you for being on the show today. Thank you, Bob. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. I tell, I'm really looking forward to our conversation because I think we really have an exciting topic today. But before we start talking about the book and you all, um, I'd like you to give our viewers some, some background as to yourself, uh, you know, where you came from and what you're doing mm. now. Well, I came to Wolf Road in 1948. My mother and father had purchased two acres of land in 1937 and they proceeded to build a dairy on the property and they used to get milk from the local farmers, process it, and deliver it to schools, houses, and at that time, individual homes. And we were living in the city of Albany. As I said, we moved to Wolf Road in 1948. My brother Jeff, my brother Nettie, and we were raised there till uh, we were done with college. Uh, I continued to stay in business with my father. Uh, we had Platt's Dairy uh, in 1951, became an ice cream parlor. In 1969, we moved to our new building and it became Platt's Place, a deli, which we continued to operate until September of 1999 when my brother and I retired. So we've been lifelong residents basically of uh, the colony and uh, have lived here so from 48 to present time. So I, that's a pretty long time. Yes, it sure yeah. is. You're, you're currently on a, uh, on a board in the town of Colony, aren't you? I'm a member of the colony. Planning Board have been its chair for 25 years, and I think uh, with the latest change in the political scene, I may be there for one more year. Okay, mm -hmm. that certainly is a long mm -hmm. tenure. Yep. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Jean, mm -hmm. how about you? Yes, well, I was born in Albany, and uh, my parents moved to the colony, Wolf Road, when I was 11, back in 1951. And uh, my father had a small construction company, and he was looking for land where he could uh, house his equipment. And uh, on the upper part of Old Wolf Road, which is now what it's called, uh, he found some property there. And it had a big barn in the back because it originally was a farm. And so that suited his needs. So uh, we moved the family out there, he did. And uh, at the time, I recall my mom saying she really didn't like the move because this was the country. <laughs> and there was just absolutely nobody around. And at that time, we had one vehicle, so uh, it was, was kind of hard getting around. And uh, it seemed like uh, everybody, where are you? You're way out there in the sticks, you know. And, uh, but we, we adjusted to it and uh, went to school in Albany. And uh, since then, I've basically stayed around the same area. And of course, you met Pete. And I met Pete. He was at the other end of Wolfram. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Convergence. Right, exactly. The, the train met in the middle. Now, <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, Richard, this is a distinct pleasure. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we work together, but um, I think mm -hmm. for an, and you're an interviewer, and I'm going to be interviewing you today. Um, so why don't you just do the same thing do and, the and same tell thing? people where you came from and how you got here? I can go back even further. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not... I was born in Fort Knox, Kentucky, which is not a state. I hear it's a federal reservation. So uh, I was born in the U.S., but no state. Uh, moved to Indiana, uh, was raised there. And uh, after college, I moved to Kentucky and ran a small county library there. And then, thanks to you, in 1984, uh, I moved here and uh, became assistant director. Right. And also now you're the manager of the television studio as well. Oh, that's, that's neat. That's right, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> An author. That's <laughs> right, a new claim to fame. <laughs> well, we're going to concentrate on what a, a wonderful book that you've, you've written and put together. Um, I would certainly call it a labor of love. And, and um, 
Um, I was privileged to be next door to a lot of the uh, conversations that were going on in the development of this book, but you, you published a book called Wolf Road, A Century of Development, and um, basically it's a, it's a history of, of Wolf Road. Um, and why, why did you decide to do this? Well, in, 19, in February of 2003, we had a call from the Beltrone Living Center, uh, Gene Myers and uh, Marion Lamar and Ed Neary, and apparently they have a uh, committee of activities committee over there, and they had been talking about doing a, a social cookies and punch and coffee type thing and uh, inviting various people that could be located that either lived or were living on Wolf Road. And we first met in January of 2003, and people bought pictures and started to reminisce and so on. So after about three months, I believe in July of 2003, we had the social and about 80 people showed up and we had exhibits up with pictures and uh, uh, mem memorabilia and uh, two people in particular, Roger Schultz and Gene uh, Schultz, Pat Schultz. Uh, had written uh, memories that they had made, we made copies of, and people took those. And it was a question and answer type uh, uh, social get together. The microphone was passed around, and people just got up and started reminiscing. Well, after that meeting, we had all these pictures around, and everybody said, Well, what's next? So uh, uh, we decided, the group, that we would put together a road show, so to speak, and uh, we exhibited the, uh, the pictures and the paraphernalia at the uh, 12205 Business Council and the Rotary Club and uh, here at the library. And then when the crossing opened up in, I believe, 2005, we had a major exhibit there and a lot of people volunteered to man the exhibit. And uh, without exaggeration, I'd say about two, 3,000 people really showed an wow. interest and wanted copies of the pictures and so on and so forth. So after the road show came to an end, I, Richard and I and Gene were talking and uh, we were going to do a uh, video and a slide, uh, show. slide show and things like that. And we thought a book would be a better way to go. Terrific. And, 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 what you, and you really have dedicated it as a history of and showing the whole mm -hmm. development of it from what it mm -hmm. was and really going back in history as well mm -hmm. um, and showing where we are right now. Um, and, and also personalizing it with the families and, and the homes and all that were there. So you really, you really captured uh, you know, um, 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 a whole period of history that mm -hmm. could have been lost, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What a wonderful job. So there, there was something like maybe 50 different visits. Uh, you might have another number, we didn't count them. But many, many people who used to live on Wolf Road, uh, a few of which have passed away in the last couple of years, came and brought us more photos mm -hmm. than we had before, gave us stories of their specific families, and we just typed and made notes as quickly as we could as, as they talked, and, mm -hmm. and then we had to put all that together. Mm -hmm. I see you have a long list of acknowledgments there, so I'm glad people were, were willing to come forward. And, and now, in this whole process, were there, were there discoveries that you made that, that perhaps you didn't even know about? I mean, you've been here a long time, but things that you found out that you had never known before? Oh yeah, there was um, uh, specifically, specifically uh, property lines um, and uh, just what these families did, how they went to school uh, and where they worked and uh, things like that. Okay. Had you heard a lot of the stories before too? I mean, I mean over the years, I mean in your business, whatever have you, in the, in the association you had, had you heard many of these stories before and, uh, and or? Some of them we did, but other, others were brand new to us. Yeah. Uh, I think we were impressed by the uh, intermarriages of the farm families. Uh, gee, this one would be an uncle of this one who's the brother-in-law of that one, and so on and so forth. That, that came as a surprise, yeah. and especially we got up, up on the upper end of Wolf Road. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as we learned about these things, we, we, w we would think this would be a book in itself, trying to trace in, in this community the relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, Gene pointed out the difficulty of travel. Uh, where a certain distance today doesn't seem like anything, you would go there just to get in your car, you know, almost mm -hmm. from, from the mall to your car might be as far as they might think, well, let's go over there. Enough, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so people tended to socialize. 
And of course, when you socialize, you get to know people, and mm -hmm. people would marry. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, that was a very fascinating thing of finding out that this person was related to that person and, and so forth. But it seemed too complicated to really g capture all of that. Yeah. Well, maybe you have another, another volume of work <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've structured the book in a particular way. And one of the things that you do in the beginning um, is you really go back to the, how this whole area was developed in the first place. I mean, the historical, historical significance of the place. So why don't we start a little bit with that, and then we'll, we'll move forward. Well, do you want me to take the lower Wolf Road? Yeah, well, what we did is we tried to divide the book into sections uh, according to the, the road itself. And we started at from Central or Albany Schenectady Road to Sand Creek Road. Right. It was one section. And from Sand Creek Road to uh, uh, Albany Shaker Road. And from Albany Shaker Road up to Waterbleed Shaker Road, which is now called Old Wolf Road. And we thought by dividing it into sections like that, uh, it would make the reader uh, more easy to uh, understand how this book was written. And see, so actually, actually compartmentalize it. Yes. But, e but even before that, Gina yes. and Pete, you actually talk about the, the, um, um, the land system, the... the uh, well, yeah, yeah I, th I was always fascinated with geology. And one of the photos in the book shows the area next to Borders, which is just behind the mall. And what's left today is a sand dune that in some areas has some vegetation on it. But we have a picture that shows you what that looked like. So 10,000 years ago, this was all the Albany Sea. And then we have the Helderberg Escarpment, and this was carved out by an ice age. That's not terribly relevant to all of Wolf Road's history, but, but it is interesting mm -hmm. in terms of the sand and how that was used and dug out. And, and then, I guess, the next major event that we note is the Patroon. Right. Uh, when this whole area was settled, large areas were given to Patroons, and they would then uh, have tenant farmers. Uh, who didn't own the land, but they would get a perpetual or uh, a lease of the land, of so, a so-called lease, to farm it, and they would have to give some of the produce uh, back to the patroon. And so one of the early maps, which we actually were fortunate to see from the town of Colony history, shows the name of Kemp on that map. And so he was one of the landholders that was an original patroon landowner. And from that, we then got a few more generations before we can really track it very well. But it, it was so large in terms of farms that we can cover the whole of Wolf Road with one or two people. Yeah, you mm -hmm. do it very well, too, in, in showing, showing the, how it developed. And I love, the, I love the one example where you show this, this parcel of land where there is no road, and then you show you know, a piece where they, so all of a sudden there's a road there. Um, and I guess one of the first other questions uh, is to ask is, is why was it named Wolf Road? Yeah, Richard can best answer yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Peter's being kind. Uh, uh, no one can really yeah. fully answer that. <clears throat> it was always assumed, and I, and I think logically, that the middle name of John Wolf Kemp, and Kemp being the landowner in the beginning, was the origin of the name. It would be a pretty unlikely thing that that name would be there, and nobody would notice when it was called Wolf Road. But then, what nobody knows is why they named Wolf Road after his middle name. And who was the wolf? Where did this name come from? What makes it even more interesting is that there's another person in the cemetery that mm -hmm. uh, we've heard talk about it that's near the Desmond, that was behind the old Lizzo and Kemp House. John Wolf Sa Sox, excuse me, S O C K S. Nobody knows who this Sox was, and why did that person have the middle name Wolf? Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's a mystery still yet to be solved, right? Be yeah. solved. And we've communicated with people from other states. Uh, we've looked at everything we could find. We don't know that there's an answer to this still out there. Well, that's a curious question. Um, now, OK, we have Wolf Road, and we're going to start with the, the first segment. I think you mm -hmm. call it the South, right? In the, in the book, you, you've designated it as the South. Is that yeah, right? Am I right? Albany Schenectady Road to Sand Creek Road. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, what was it? What talk some more about that? Well, the the major piece of property was the old Colony Country Club, is, which is where the Colony Center is located now. And that in 1912, uh, a club called the Ad Adelphi Club uh, was built there. Unfortunately, three months later, the Adelphi Club burned down. Burned down, right? 
And then in 1915, the Colony Country Club uh, took it over. It was a nine-hole golf course, very challenging, and uh, uh, was uh, sponsored mainly by the Jewish families in New Albany and Schenectady and Troy. And uh, they had some rough times during the uh, Depression, but uh, came back strong right after that. And in 1962-63, Homart Corporation, which was a subsidiary of Sears Roebuck, bought the property from uh, the Colony Country Club, and they relocated to Voyageville, New York. Right. That's always mm -hmm. been an odd thing that they went out there. Mm -hmm. So, th so th did they want to relocate? Did they want to move out because of other th circumstances? No, or? I think it was just the price that they were offered. offered. And in okay. those days, I believe it was twenty-eight thousand dollars an acre for times fifty-six acres, and it come out to about uh, a million and a two half, million, yeah. something yeah. like that. It was quite a place too. I mean, the photographs. Yeah, oh, yeah. It was quite yeah. impressive. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Very nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so there was a swimming was, pool. Yeah. And they had an influence on the rest of the road. They had, uh, there was three really mansions on the west side of Wolf Road, just opposite the country club. And uh, there was three families there, the Mendelssohn's, uh, the Spalbergs, and the, I forgot the, who the middle house. The, uh, the Dots bought their, that ho their house from the Spalberg. Okay. And then uh, uh, George Dot bought from uh, the Rosenstocks. And the middle one was Floyd Atkinson, and he ran a trucking company in Albany. Uh, where the Days Inn now was actually a hilltop motel that George Dot had built, and I think it had 17 rooms in it, and they went for $7 a night. <laughs> and, uh, we uh, could only wish, <laughs> right? <laughs> now it's like 120, 130, or whatever. <laughs> but when we got married, yeah. uh, uh, a lot of the guests in the bridal party stayed at the motel. You know, co college classmates and friends from the area, and so on. So, with the purchasing mm -hmm. of this property, was that the beginning of the of the commercial development of of, of the uh, Wolf Road area? The real strong commercial development. Once the center was built, well, the first thing that happened was when the Northway was built. Okay. That was in '59. Okay. And, and then when Colony Center uh, was announced, the f next big piece that went was uh, where the Times Union building is now. So then over the years, we were just filling in the blanks. Sort from of one filled end in to from the, the ends to the, yeah. to the middle. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, I, and one, other, one other thing we don't want to leave out was the airport, which mm -hmm. uh, that came much earlier, but it developed in phases. And there were two other large expansions, I believe, of the airport. And what that did, it has a big influence, of course, on the hotels. Mm -hmm. OK. And yeah. so, but as you said, this was country uh, when you came here. And so it, it, was, it was becoming just a changing from farmland to now becoming more of a um, commercial, I guess, district. Yeah. And, and residential. Yet, and residential. Mm -hmm. That's always been the curious thing. When I first, I've been here, uh, what, almost 30 years now, and, and it was always a very curious thing to me to see this mixture of homes and mm -hmm. businesses. Yeah. And are all, are all the homes gone now? Uh, Do we have anything left? The yeah. homes if you on count the Upper of, Wolf Road. Yeah. And the end of Old Wolf Road is still there. And Mrs. Lietzo. Mrs. Lietzo is still there, In yeah. front of the uh, next door to the Homewood Suites. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure like, the acreage goes for a lot more than uh, 28. Oh. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> much more. <laughs> much Good to have owned some land, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. We would want all the land. <laughs> there you go. If you'd only known, right? Right. Now, you, when you in introduced yourself, you talked about um, um, the dairy, and w w that was on Wolf Road, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but not where your delicatessen was. That was right. further down. W uh, the house I grew up in, um, Gene and I moved back into it in 1967, and then we moved the house to its present location in 1969. And then there was a European health spa located there, which became Bally's uh, Health Spa right. after that and that's since been torn down. And in 1969, we moved from the old dairy to the building that housed Platt's Place. Uh, the old dairy was torn down because of the widening of Wolf Road, and uh, it was under condemnation. But you, st you still maintain dairy, uh, dairy uh, basically, you, at least. Uh, uh, yeah, it was a very confusing time. When you answered the phone in the morning, you didn't know if it was going to be a deli <laughs> order, a milk <laughs> order, an ice cream order. We didn't quite know what business we were Did you have milk trucks to go around and <laughs> oh, yeah. the bottles? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was interesting to me also to see the, the, the houses fill in, because you start out with one large farm, and then people have children. Mm -hmm. 
and they will leave their property to their children. Now they have to divide the land. In one case, was it the Bergwalds? There were yep. six properties mm -hmm. in a row that were left to their children. But, but this happened in other areas as well. And so you would have more houses fill in. Uh, there would still be a farm, but houses got denser. And then as houses got denser, you could support a few more businesses. Mm -hmm. Not just one store, but maybe two or th mm -hmm. three stores. And there was a lot of uh, developers, uh, the people that really saw that what was going to happen on Wolf Road was certainly Willard Anderson, uh, Lou Swire, Sal Beltrone, uh, John Peacock, Michael Peacock. Visionaries. Uh, they, they were the ones that uh, either tried to buy large tracts of land, and there was a fellow named Lester Comet who, who seemed to be more interested in smaller pieces, a la where Goodyear Tire is now and uh, Fuddruckers. Uh, there were simply a matter of buying one or two houses and you could develop a piece of commercial land. During the, during the uh, mid-60s, it was like the Wild West out there. You know, the rumors every day somebody yeah. else was selling and he was getting more than the next guy. That's going to happen and so next. Forth. Yeah, exactly. I know. Mm -hmm. So the, the main route from Albany was always uh, Central Avenue area, right? That was the main, yeah. main mm -hmm. drag, so to yes. speak. And this was, this was farmland, country, and then all of a sudden these things started happening and people started coming this way. And uh, there's a picture in there that shows the road is a pretty pretty small road and obviously there came a point in time when it uh, was necessary to to accommodate, I think. The, of course uh, it was dirt. It dirt was a hard-packed yeah. dirt, dirt road. road. Yeah. And yeah. didn't you tell stories about people oh. being pulled? Oh yeah, the farmers would, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, when my father delivered milk, I mean, you know, if you went down Sand Creek Road and during, in the spring when the thaw came, you know, everybody was towing everybody out, you know. And it was really quite a narrow road right up into the Hill One Colony Center. Was Is that so? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because it was several years later that it was widened, right? Yeah, the center just celebrated its 40th anniversary in 1966, and the Wolf Road, the widening from Albany Schenectady Road to Shaker Road didn't happen until 69-70. So those were, you talk about traffic now, it, the traffic then was unbelievable. Oh yeah, yeah. it's all relative. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a main, it's a main thoroughfare, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And oh. so I guess another thing with that was that uh, when the road was put in, the Northway was put in, it cut many farms in half. Right, you mentioned yeah. that. Right down yeah. the middle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so on the west side of Wolf Road, uh, you were very bounded by, by, the, by the, ex the Northway. Mm -hmm. And some farms continued on, but they was, it was difficult for the farmers to get to the other part of their property. They would have to go under the Northway on Sand Creek and then back around. Mm -hmm. Shaker Road. Yeah. Do a loop and shaker there. as well. Shaker road, yeah, as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that that made a big difference mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And now we're still waiting for the Phantom, the Phantom uh, Exit, Exit Three. <laughs> 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 will that ever? Will that ever occur? <laughs> However, one interesting thing that Peter remembered was, oh, oh the Exit Three is proposed where the Hess Station is now, the Hess Gas Station. Okay. And I remember them coming to the planning board and said, if we can get 10 more years out of this brand new station, we'll have made our money and uh, go on our merry old way. It's probably 25 years <laughs> now, <laughs> and they're still there. Too. So much for their word, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, what, what now, we, now Colony Center was a, was a significant thing that happened in this whole area, right? Was it, was it one of the first major... Um, uh, the first really Malls? enclosed mall. I don't think anybody realized what it was uh, while it was being built, unless you happen to travel to Dallas or Chicago, where they were quite prevalent. Right. But this was the first in the area. And there, there was a fear that, uh, you know, it was going to drive the little guy out, the small dress shop, the, the men's shop, and so on. Some of the uh, people that were downtown, like Flaws, they came out to Colony Center, I know. Um, uh, well, that's an old name. Corbett's Shoes was an old sh the shoe store that was in Colony Center that came from downtown Albany or Central Avenue in Albany. But it was just, it's just like the big boxes today. Uh, retail is always in a state of flux, and uh, some, there's always room for the little guy, too, but uh, whoever thought you'd see the uh, uh, Home Depots and Lowe's exactly. and Walden. Exactly. 
Now, I'm, maybe this is an obvious question, but do you have Wolf Road, you're drawing all this attention to it, and, and uh, you had all this land around it. Is, it. is this what prompted the communities, the, 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 the col village and the colony mm -hmm. to grow in its, in its, in its way? Or were, were they already established uh, communities before, before the major stuff happened on Wolf Road? Mm, I would say after Wolf Road started its expansion spree, then, then the question became, well, what's going to be next? And uh, obviously, Carner, New Carner Road came into play maybe five or ten years after Wolf Road got developed. Uh, and it's continued on that way. And today, you look at Route 7, say, from the Circle in Latham going west in Iskiuna, that seems to be the real hot spot now. Yeah. Uh, where NICE is located and uh, cool insurance. Um, but there are a lot of people mm -hmm. living on either side of Wolf Road. I mean, you, you have the village of Colony and going west and, and mm -hmm. going east as well. I mean, were they already established communities or, or were they, did, they, did they actually become more established as a result of this whole new center? Well, in the, in the village you had Tanglewood and Saddlewood, which were uh, communities, residential communities that were built right after World War II, 48, 49, 50. Uh, Central Avenue from, say, Osborne Road up through, oh gosh, at least through New Carner Road was already established. That, that okay. was the older part of Colony. Okay, so it was, it was growing, it was spreading yeah. out from the city, right? Yeah. But see, those people, they would travel to either to Schenectady or to Albany with a, uh, there was a bus transportation on that Albany Schenectady Road, and that's where they would travel right. back and forth. Right. Mm -hmm. So they get around. Now I remember it, and, 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 and I'm sure quite a few people do, but I remember there were movie theaters on Wolf Road, the Fox, yeah. and, oh, yes. and the one that was near uh, Colony Center. And, yep. and, uh, and now we're going to get movies back again yep. in the new <laughs> Colony <laughs> Center. What uh, goes around comes around. But, right? uh, so that was, that was, I know the Fox was a mm -hmm. big screen movie theater and a big draw. Yeah. Well, and then where you have Office Max now, Tommy Danelian uh, had the foresight to build the Star Supermarket there. Remember, right. do you remember the other stores? Uh, it was a, a hairdresser, an imperial hairdresser, I believe, and um, I think there was Al, Al Barber. The barber shop was there too, yeah, uh -huh. and a bakery shop, Golden yeah. Crust Bakery. No, Golden Crust Bakery. X. Oh, was that's there? important. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't remember Bex. I certainly don't remember Bex. I, you would have had to live here uh, 30 years? No, in the early 60s. 60s well, 63, yeah. 64. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you came in 80. <laughs> Just a little bit, right. Okay. Uh, Bex was a famous watering hole on Wolf Road. It was on the corner of Wolf Road and Shaker Road. And uh, I know my father spent many a night there and uh, a lot of his friends and a lot of the farmers. But the Leo and his wife... Uh, Leo came over from Germany, and um, a lot of the farmers would be in there on a Saturday afternoon after the chores were done, and at 7 o'clock, Leo might have a wedding coming in and would ask the farmers to leave because they weren't quite dressed <laughs> properly. <laughs> but uh, Time to but, shave uh, years <laughs> here. <laughs> and sometimes the farmers just didn't want to leave. You know, so, Understandably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about some of the other, I know, you, you, Richard, you gave me some names. How about some of the other significant? Uh, well, one we can tie into another retail establishment or a whole type of retail establishment that seems to be somewhat on the out these days. And, and that was the Zembruski uh, farm. Uh, in this, in, correct me if I get the wrong farmer. It's okay. Uh, this was a nice-sized farm. And we have pictures of him on a horse. We have a picture of, of, of the daughter in front of a truck loaded with vegetables. But then we also have a sign that says 59 acres, I believe it was. Yep. Okay. Yep. And behind that is the new service merchandise, mm -hmm. which used to be a kind of a store that was revolutionary, where you would go in and you would have your little pad and you would pick something. And they wouldn't all be things you could buy. They would have them in a warehouse. There was another one of those present company on the other side of Wolf Road, uh, which would be near, uh, not as far down as the uh, cinema, right? It was a near computer drive. Thank you. Yeah. And both of those now are gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, yes, the, the, the shopping present, center is the present company. The, the present yeah. company yeah. was yeah. 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 Okay. You went in and 
How did That's that right. work? You did. You went in, you ordered something out of the catalog and gave a number. You could that. see things yeah. in the store, yes, but they weren't them. to be bought. You, right. The actual item would be back in the store. Mm -hmm. That's right. So there would be nobody stocking yeah. that, I suppose, was the theory. And then the Schultes, uh, they came in 1942, right smack in the, during the war. Yeah. And uh, you couldn't buy any. Everything was, uh, according to Mrs. Schultz, everything was born, bought, bought secondhand, you know, from the heaters to the bathroom fixtures and the rest of it. And they went from a small uh, roadside stand selling uh, vegetables. Most of the farms on Wolf Road were truck farms. And then they just kept growing and growing and growing, and hot house after hot house after hot house. And then they were big in the uh, Easter was a the Palm Sunday was the kickoff of the planting season in those days. And my goodness, they were packed to the walls there, you know. And then they wound up; they were in the Christmas uh, artificial Christmas right, trees, right, and Christmas right. gifts. So the whole growth of that that uh, business mm -hmm. there. And is that where, where the Lazari uh, is that area, or is, am I right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's an especially interesting area for us because it's the easiest to trace absolutely everything. Everything from there. Because yeah. the camp house was there. Mm -hmm. And then that was sold to somebody named Case. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Schm Schmitka, I believe, was the name that came after that. There may have been something in between I'm leaving out. But Schmitka was a little bit like Smith. Mm -hmm. And then the Smiths owned the property with the Litzos because they intermarried. Mm -hmm. And so we have a nice picture on, on actually the title page, I believe, mm -hmm. of the smith Lietzo family. Yeah. And the Smiths then gave way to the Schultz, which yep. we just talked yep. about. Jean, you interviewed a lot of the older matronly women on Wolf Road, like Mrs. Strobel and the Phoenix and the Lietzos and Mrs. Liotta. Do you want to talk about them a little bit? Oh, that was, I'll tell you, that was the highlight of writing the whole book. I mean, just just sitting down and talking with these women. I mean, it was just marvelous uh, for them to reminisce and uh, just say how they lived in the past and how they came about uh, farming and everything. It, w it was just, just delightful. And uh, they were so helpful. And uh, what was a nice part, too, when I interviewed the Nitz girls, uh, the girls got together and uh, fortunately one was here from Florida, they were twins, one was from Florida and her other sister who lives quite a distance away came and the three of them came to the library, sat down and talked about how they had the farmland, uh, had, they had no electricity and uh, how they all walked to the school which was at the other end of Wolf Road, it was just a two room schoolhouse. Uh, they, uh, it was almost like uh, reminiscing from out of the past, mm -hmm. and they were just so bubbly. Uh, Mrs. Beanick was just wonderful, too. Uh, they gave me a picture of the, which we do have in the book, of the children in the school. Uh, they were trying to remember and to identify their classmates, and one would say, oh, this is so-and-so, and they'd go, oh, no, I think this is so-and-so. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was just, it was, oh, yeah, remember him, remember this, and remember how he used to pull my pigtails, and uh, <laughs> just marvelous. Uh, so uh, these women, uh, it, it was just a delight talking with them. But, uh, they, they did a lot of pranks in those days. Yeah. Uh, my father one day had been out at Beck's and bought a car from a gentleman for ten dollars and it didn't have any brakes on it but he drove the car down Wolf Road and stopped at a Ray Wiggins house uh, who lived up where Denoyer Chevrolet was and said, Ray, come on out and Try take a ride in a new car with me. So he gets out and he just goes down the road and of course goes put the brakes on. And nothing. No brakes. Just kept going. And <laughs> then he wound up selling that car to uh, a fellow named uh, Joe, <coughs> Joe Pettigresso who worked for my father for ten dollars. So there was an even swap, and he kept that car for a good number of years. <laughs> Hopefully, he put brakes on it. <laughs> yeah. So you know, even though we talked about Wolf Road, you know, sort of starting uh, one point and the other other side of it, we've we've been sort of building it as we've been talking here. Have we we've got we've gotten to the middle section and a little below here? Um, there's the the third part, and it, it's about Old Wolf Road. And, and wh why is it called Old Wolf Road? Well, I think the big reason is that was the part of the road that was never rebuilt, like the okay. road from uh, Central Avenue to Shaker Road. Okay. That was actually relocated to a little bit to the west to go underneath the Northway bridges and then picked itself up where uh, uh, 
the Wingate Hotel is now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we then from that point to, what is it, Wolf, uh, Niskiuna, and what we, Shaker Road, right. where they all come together, that's the end of that's Old the end of Road. It. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just going to say, in the book, we, we were fortunate to have uh, plans, uh, the architectural drawings uh, of the road and what would be on it before and after mm -hmm. of that curve. So we have one that's straight, and then we have one that's curved. But we, we really struggled a lot mm -hmm. trying to identify exactly where that road went. And so we have one picture coming from the front of Beck's, which is diagonal from the library or the Times Union, and we're looking at what is now the north way, as if we were looking up the entrance ramp. Mm -hmm. And I had a really hard time realizing that this was not the entrance ramp. This was Wolf Road. Wolf Road. That was Wolf Road. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. So what they did, they basically made a, an L, and they went around and then back up. And there is a, a bit of a curve up there, of course, but that's after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now at the end, just now, just in the past, what? Several months, we 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 uh, leveled a uh, right at the end of Wolf Road, a, a, a significant piece of uh, property, I guess, although it hadn't been used for a while. Nauters, uh, um, right, yeah, and there were the homes there as well. Mm -hmm. um, and was that always a? Um, I mean, from their beginning, they I, they they had their homes there. Yeah, and then they built the business. Jimmy was it 1921? He bought the, was, he yeah. bought an acre and a quarter of land from the Skitskis who had the farm immediately to the east of Norder's original garage. And he was, he was a real fixture on Wolf Road. Uh, if you took the old time businesses, you'd have Norder's, uh, Schultz, uh, Platts. Uh, there was Dr. Burns who lived on the corner of uh, Wolf Road and Albany Schenectady Road. He actually lived in the house and his office was in the same building. And Jerry Navilia, uh, we could talk for another half hour about Jerry and his family, uh -huh. uh, but he was a longtime fixture on Wolf Road. And then on Jean's end, uh, she had uh, her father who started uh, his construction business, or moved his construction business in 51. And the Hillards were there. Hillards is the last active farm on Wolf Road, both the new and the old Wolf Road. They're around the very end of Wolf Road. And you show that one picture where you see it's an aerial view, and I wish it had just gone a little bit further because you know then the library would have been included in it, um, uh, where you see the Times Union, the structure of the Times Union mm -hmm. building there being what was built. Being built. What was it? What was that? That also was a farm. Yep, uh, Huffman Farm was there. Uh, uh, what was it? The grocery store. Hart's grocery Hart. store. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was Noah's Hart's. The Noah's girl. Mm -hmm. And my favorite picture in the book. Yes. Although. Since I've seen it, I know I've seen a number of pictures. But when I first saw this picture, I, I don't want to say I fell in love with it. That's a, it's a photo. But I, I, had, I was running around showing it to everybody. Mm -hmm. It's just so charming of this woman in overalls out in front of a family, of a, what would you call it, a, a family store? Yeah, it was a grocery, grocery store. store. Family grocery yep. store. Mm -hmm. Pumping gas into a very old, maybe a 1940s mm -hmm. yes. car. Mm -hmm. You have to see it to appreciate it. She's pretty. She's young, mm -hmm. and, and it's just so bucolic. It looks like Norman Rockwell could have painted that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It speaks of, of the era, too. Right. Yes. And ju just, just a little bit moving a little further, and the, the library property was also a farm? Was that? Was that uh, yeah, that was the Hoffman Farm. Hoffman Farm. Hoffman Farm, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Hoffman Farm yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Albany Shaker Road um, was, was, was there. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It, it also was a dirt road at one point in time, or was it, was it had it been uh, that developed? Probably a little more developed than Wolf Road because it was the main artery from uh, Albany up through, uh, up through the airport, right? Right. And okay, so that was a significant yeah. travel path. Right. Yeah. But basically, the whole of Colony was part of the Rensselaer, Van Rensselaer estate. Yeah, uh, right. Uh, yeah. Some 7,000 acres. Or right. Something. And it broke off from Water Valide, which mm -hmm. is a Dutch name, of course, also. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about um, this, this, actually the library in this area being the, the, the geographical center of the town. And you mentioned in the book early on about really um, if we wanted to, to, to sort of signify a downtown uh, colony, that, that really the Wolf Road area is, mm -hmm. is, for all practical purposes, the downtown, because we don't have such a place mm -hmm. other than that. So, right. We've uh, always said that, at least in the last year or two. Yeah. But I was surprised that I heard people from Albany saying it as well, not only about Colony, but about Albany as well. 
Really? Yeah. Because Albany's downtown needs revival. And they're working on it. Mm -hmm. They're always working on it. Yeah. But this is here. And many times they from Albany then would come to this new kind of downtown, which is Wolf Road mm -hmm. and the mall. Mm -hmm. and in a way, it's more of a downtown than maybe I thought. I, I think when the state reconstructed Wolf Road back in the mid-90s, and added uh, really adequate sidewalks compared to the little black type path that they had at the beginning. Uh, you see a big trend with people walking, especially from the motel to restaurants or just out jogging. You know, that's kind uh, of a, a novel idea, I think, because you don't see that in a lot of commercial strips uh, mm -hmm. where you have the pedestrian walkways and and I mean the the whole concentration on Wolf Road, the beautification project. Um, really giving it eye appeal mm -hmm. uh, and also that practical aspect of being able yeah. to connect because uh, heavens knows people come here and get in a hotel and and they feel stuck unless they use their car and people can I see them all the time walking yeah it's, it's, it's and I'm is. sure you're gonna see more and more shuttle buses paid for by the businesses on the road especially the hotels restaurants and colony center the yeah. theaters to uh, pick up people at the Marriott take them down to the shopping center and take them to real seafood or what have you and then call and pick us up when we're ready to go. I love the way in the book where you, you, you juxtapose then and now. I mm -hmm. mean, you, so you can, people can get an idea. You can, you can go sort of in reverse if you want to because you, you, there's a familiar site and you can see how it, it was. So you're very fortunate to be able to get that, that perspective there. Mm -hmm. um, it must have been something to see so much of what you knew early mm -hmm. on, you know, from the days of the dairy. Um, disappear and 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 things change and and yet there are there's still enough significant things that you so you say mm -hmm. ah yes it's still it's mm -hmm. still here mm -hmm. but it's it's forever changing and now we're yep. going through another huge change yep. uh, with Colony Center um, I mean it's I don't know if we've reached our limit or not but uh, it's certainly one not. of the one of the modus operandi of uh, of the book is to show before and after and in many cases there's six permutations <laughs> yeah. where we would say it was this and then it was this and then it was this. Yeah. And some of us probably remember one thing in the middle and somebody else remembers something else. But, you know, we, we remember Herman's sporting goods, but we might not remember exactly what was in between. Right. And there's just so many, so many businesses that came before. And the grocery stores. Uh, and everything. So, many, so many people had a um, contact with Wolf Road, be it whether they worked at, say, Clay's Fish Fry at one time, or at Platts, or Norters, or Schultz's, and it seems that the younger people we talk to, younger in our case, we're talking maybe in their 40s, you know, and uh, my goodness, you just wouldn't think the road had that much influence on, on them, personally, you know, I can and understand. Well, it's amazing, yeah. and, and I think you're seeing that by the interest in the book itself. Uh -huh. uh, um, uh, you know, you talked about when you did the crossings uh, exhibit and you had the n that number, of that yeah. many people show up and show interest, but mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, well, I know uh, that with your uh, um, uh, publication of this book, uh, you, you took a, um, a modest approach to, to uh, your first printing mm -hmm. and you're finding out that uh, people are really wanting this, uh, this book and the information and so there's a lot of attachment. Mm -hmm that way. I'm, I'm going to call it a runaway bestseller <laughs> in the area here. Wow. You know, and so I know that we here get a lot of requests for it. Mm -hmm. um, if people are interested, and hopefully they will be, if they haven't heard about it already, I know you had that nice piece in the Times Union, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I'm sure word of mouth is, 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 is spreading the, uh, the news. But if people are interested in getting a copy of this book, how do they go about it? Well, right now, Richard, Correct me if I'm wrong, I think uh, it'll be available on December 11th here at the library again. And Richard's got uh, requests for copies from Borders on Wolf Road, Borders and Crossgate. And, and Clifton uh, Park. Albany, and Clifton Park. The Albany Institute of History and Art, uh, our Pine House, the Beltrone Living Center, the Book House in Stuyvesant Plaza. Sounds impressive, doesn't it? It is <laughs> impressive. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I think I, so. I can't fathom it. <laughs> I mean, it's beyond your expectations, perhaps? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, by far. Well, you started out by saying it was a labor of love, and yes. that is true mm -hmm. in the simplest mm -hmm. sense possible, because when you saw all the stories and the photographs, and you've heard some of them, mm -hmm. you just don't want them to go away. Mm -hmm. 
and, yeah. and we were happy just to get it down into one book, yes. mm -hmm. much less to put it in a lot of right. people's hands. I had a call from a fellow in Florida, Leo Dot, who lived on Wolf Road with right. his nine brothers and sisters, and he calls up and he says, I love the book, except I want to correct one thing. I have had nine holes in one in my career, not seven. <laughs> <laughs> So that's being modest. Are you going to have to do a correction, <laughs> Pete? <laughs> Arata, here we go. <laughs> Was it, I mean, you're indicating this. I mean, it must have been a, um, a difficult, made some difficult choices as far as to what to include and how to trim it down and yeah. how to ha give it a flow. Mm -hmm. uh, which, is, which is really nice. Uh, a lot of it was figuring out complicated interactions. Yeah. Because let's, uh, the area around uh, where the Smiths were, where Cerrone Drive mm -hmm. is, where the Schultzes were, and the Anderson Group. And there was some trading and small pieces, and we're trying to describe these things. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't always easy. No, it, it, uh, well, I, I just took my horn a little bit. I thought the three of us just worked uh, very well together. Uh, well, once away. Especially I, my wife and uh, I, you imagine <laughs> all There you go. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Here, huh? Still in the middle. <laughs> well, I, I must say, I mean, I, I, I was often, you know, next door when, when you came in uh, for your visit, and, and there was always this wonderful enthusiasm, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, you just had such a good spirit about this. Obviously, mm -hmm. there was a lot of joy, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and, and your product is, you should be very proud of your product. Yeah. Well, it's all those acknowledgments, too. There was yes. a tremendous amount of input from And thanks a lot to all those people. people. And we yeah. want to thank all those people, too, that came mm -hmm. for it. We, we called up several people and just asked them if they could just come to the library. Or just We talked to them a few minutes, and uh, we got a grateful response. There was a few that, you know, had problems. They couldn't meet us or whatever. And uh, so we're hopefully what we have in the book, we know that there is more that could have been put into it. Uh, and as we go on, I know people are going to be calling us and telling us, oh, you don't have this in, don't have that in. Uh, but we had to make a decision, and uh, we could go on and on and on. But we had to say, this is it. You know, there comes a time when this is it. Well, and, it's uh, a very neat job. As I say, you know, there's always potential for uh, volu potential. volume yeah. two or yeah. whatever we have. Well, Richard's right. looking for volunteers to start a study yeah. of Wolf Ro or Albany Shaker Road. Right? There you go. <laughs> I think that could be a, a rumor that I'd like to swap. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just about out of time, but is there anything before we leave you'd like to, uh, to say? Uh, just a plug for the library. The, any, all the proceeds from this book will go to the library. Uh, Bookstores, they make a very nominal amount. Gene and I have done this just for, because we want to do it. it we, we don't pretend to be authors. Well, you are now, <laughs> sir. All of you are. And, and thank you very much for that, for the, with the <laughs> library as well. And, uh, Thanks again for uh, for being on the show today. It was my, it was pleasure. my pleasure too. It was our pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Great. Thank you Great. So and thank you for joining me on Getting to Know You. I hope you enjoyed the show and will join us next time. Until then, have a good one. <laughs>